build a snowman and pretend that he was worse than brown. He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man. But you can do the job when you're in town. was a day that we all would recall when it drifted to and fro why you should have seen it snow it was near seven feet or more by the old barn door oh the first snowfall of the winter what a joy was waiting for this day and of course down the road a hill for each jack and jill
so nice. There are so many pretty lights. And every year, Grandma and Grandpa come over, and we play games and eat lots of yummy stuff. But the thing I love best is presents. Grandma and Grandpa always bring lots of presents. They bring toys and CDs and lots of cool stuff. Last year, I got a PlayStation. They're here, they're here. Grandma and Grandpa are here. Our presents are here. Hello, children. Hello, children. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's nice to see you again, Grandma and Grandpa. Yeah, it's great to see you. Did you bring us anything? As a matter of fact, we did. We brought something very special for you. Really? Can I see it? What is it? Well, it's something very special. It's, it's a bottle of prune juice just for you. Prune juice? What's that? Oh, it's something you drink with breakfast. Keeps you regular. <laughs> regular? What do you mean? Regular. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something your grandmother will explain to you later. <laughs> Stop teasing the children, or all you're going to get this Christmas is a lump of coal. Oh, poo poo poo, aren't you Miss Sunshine today? <laughs> Come on, Grandpa, what did you really bring us? Is that all Christmas is to you? Presents and gifts and toys? Well, what else is there? Don't you know anything? Christmas is celebrating the birthday of Jesus. Okay, but can we celebrate later and open our presents now? No, no, no. We have to hear the Christmas story before we open our presents. Grandma and Grandpa always tell us the Christmas story before we open our presents. Okay, but can we get the short version? Well, it all started one night long ago. One silent night.
let me get this straight. Jesus was God's son, right? That's right. But he was born on Earth, so his parents would be... Help me out here, Gramps. Well, his parents were Mary and Joseph. But I thought you said he was God's son. Uh, he was. You see, Mary was a virgin. Oh. Grandpa, what's a virgin? <laughs> well, you see, a virgin is... It's someone who... It's, it, it, it's something your grandmother will explain to you later. Why do I always have to explain all the fun things? It's because women are more verbal than men. Don't you know that? I read it in a book somewhere. Something about men being from Jupiter and women being from Pluto or something like that. Uh, anyways, if you need me for the really tough explanations, I'll be in my cave. <laughs> It just means that God put the baby in Mary's tummy. That's all. You said that Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph at the time, right? That's right. So didn't Joseph wonder where the baby came from? <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> oh, actually, when he found out that Mary was pregnant, oh, it went over like the pork chops at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> he was so mad. Oh, he, he wanted to break off the engagement right away and oh, send her out of town. But then an angel came and explained the whole thing to him. Speaking of angels, can we hear about the angels and shepherds now? That's my favorite part. When Jesus was born, angels appeared to some shepherds on a nearby hillside and told them all about it. They must have been really excited. Oh, are you kidding? Excited? Oh, they were more than excited. They were announcing the birth of God's son. They, they weren't just excited. They, they were singing. Were they singing Christmas carols? Oh, that's a good question. We don't know exactly what they were singing, but I'm sure it was a medley of wonderful songs. All the earth is resounding with joy. Rejoice on a hill nearby While well, angels fill that starry sky God's voice is heard in an infant's cry
So baby Jesus was born in a stable among the animals. That must have been so cool, being with all those cows, goats, and chickens and stuff. Ew, that must have been so gross. It was probably all dirty and smelly and disgusting. I don't know. Probably wasn't so bad. As long as you watched where you stepped, you were okay. <laughs> kidding, kidding. You said that Jesus was God's son, right? That's right. And God is a great king, right? Yes. So if God's a great king and Jesus is his son, that would make him a prince, right? So why wasn't he born in a palace with fancy clothes and servants and lots of gold and stuff? Well, maybe God was trying to show us that all the gold and fancy clothes and big houses and stuff really aren't that important. So maybe God was trying to tell us that Christmas isn't just about the presents. It's about the giver, not the gift. Does that mean we don't get any presents besides prune juice? Oh, don't worry. You'll get presents all right. But all your grandmother is trying to say is that Jesus was God's present to us. He, he was God's greatest gift. I wonder what it was like to get God's gift, to be there the first day that Jesus was born. Everybody is celebrating Christmas all around the world. See the smiling faces on the children, all the boys and girls. Even in the darkest corner, on a starless night, there's a light that shines down upon us, burning pure and bright. Christmas, Christmas, first day of the sun. Christmas, Christmas, sunny days for everyone. Thousand years ago in a manger, the baby Christ was born. Come to lead us out of the darkness that first Christmas morn. So let him fill your heart with gladness. Celebrate the day. No more tears and no more sadness. The sun is here to stay. The sun is here. Christmas, 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 first day of the sun. Christmas, Christmas, sunny days for everyone. Now's the time for all men. Treat each other just like friends. Peace on earth, mercy too. Just want to say Merry Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, first day of the 
Jesus other than Mary and Joseph? Yes, there were the shepherds, and later, wise men from the east came to worship him and bring gifts for him. As I remember it, I think there were three of them. Uh, their names were uh, Gaspar, Balthazar, and Melchior. Wait a minute. You can't be sure of that. All we know is that wise men came to see the baby Jesus. We don't know how many there were, and we don't know their names either. Tradition has said there were three wise men because of the three gifts that were brought. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So there could have been two wise men, or four, or ten? And I suppose you mean to tell me they could have been named John, Paul, George, and Ringo? <laughs> How come you know all this, Grandma? I read it in the Bible. That's where you find the story of Jesus and the real meaning of Christmas. The Bible is God's love letter to mankind. He wants everyone to read it and find out the truth about his son Jesus, the greatest gift. Yeah, if you read the Bible, you'd know Christmas isn't just about the presents. Well, have you read the Bible, smarty pants? Um, yeah, I have. Um, parts of it. What parts, dear? Um, I read in the beginning, and, um, do unto others before they do to you. <laughs> and, um, blessed are the cheesemakers. <laughs> um, Grandma, can we read the Christmas story from the Bible this year? Yeah, I want to know exactly what happened when Jesus was born. Well, maybe Grandpa would read it to you while I go get us some Christmas cookies. Yay! I would love to. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit.
Bill Devers was a young man that you wouldn't really call religious. When church came along and Christmas showed up, it wasn't something for him to be in church or think about the Christmas story. During World War II, though, Bill Devers was drafted into the U.S. Army and found himself in a fighting unit and in a foreign part of the land that he'd never been to before. And the very experience being in the military brought him in touch with other people who believed in God. One of them was the chaplain in his unit. And through the time of their training, the chaplain would speak to him about God, talk to him about the Bible, share with him scripture verses, and Bill always really didn't want to have anything to do with that. The first action that their unit became engaged in saw a number of the men in Bill's unit killed and seriously wounded, and one of them was the chaplain. And as they were gathering the arms from the men who had died, and while they were strategizing as to what to do, Bill went by where the chaplain was being attended to. And the chaplain called out to me and said, Bill, Bill. So Bill stopped, and the chaplain said to him, Bill, this Bible, take this Bible. And Bill said, no, I don't want to take your Bible. The chaplain said, Bill, I had a dream. you got to take this Bible. Take it, please. And so really just to appease the chaplain, Bill took the Bible and put it into his pocket. Their unit went into action about 20 minutes later. And in the midst of the battle, Bill was struck by a bullet. The force of the bullet knocked him off his feet. And as he was losing consciousness, he thought that he was dying. When he came to again, he had a, a, a throbbing pain in his chest. But when he reached to see if there was any blood, there wasn't. But what there was, was the Bible. And when he pulled it out, he realized that the bullet that had struck him had gone right into the Bible. And when he opened it up, he discovered that the bullet had penetrated to the book of Psalms. And the verse that it landed on said this, A thousand will fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. When he thinks back on that story, that was kind of a wow moment for him. It changed his life. It saved his life. You see, the Christmas story is something that you can hear as something to do with the 25th of December, or you can hear it as we presented a day of the singing Christmas tree as the story of God's message of love for you. You see, the songs and the music and the lights and the choir and the cross in the tree is all about what Christmas is about, about God's love for you and sending his son to live and to die for me and for you. And when we understand that story and its truth, it can change our lives. Maybe you've come this afternoon and you've listened to this presentation. Christmas can be just like any other Christmas for you unless you make a decision today. A decision to believe that this story is truth, that God actually became a little baby in a manger and grew up to be a man who was crucified on a cross. This afternoon, to believe that story requires a decision, but a decision simple enough for a child to make. It's as simple as A, B, A. First of all, you need to admit. Admit that the Christmas spirit, sentimentality, it's not enough. You need Jesus. And then believe. Believe that Jesus died for you. And then ask. Ask Jesus to come into your life. God, I believe that you're listening to me. I believe that you love me. And right now I admit that I need more than just the Christmas spirit. I need Jesus. And I believe that Jesus died for me. And now I ask, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Change my life. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life. And thank you for Christmas and for your love. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.
Holiday! 